Just go. Oh, that's go. what I'm saying. Just go. We got to do it. Go. We already hit record. Okay. So okay. we're doing it. I mean, okay. Well, we got to do it right now. I'm going to go back. Oh, I'm saying. We've been on King Katanga for a while. We went on it for a long time. Cash me outside. How about that? This is what happens ah. when you're live here on Grown Man Record Night, the place you want to be on a Friday night. Oh, thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. It's what you do on a Friday night to have some fun with your friends. Listen to records. What's going on? Steve Fever. We got Jay hanging out. There's a, I got a lot of them. Oh, no, I'm good. I'm good. That's see all that? I'm good. I think no. that's good. Yeah. Some room. That's a frame. It's still curtain to curtain though. Curtain to curtain. Look, I'll, I'll help. I'll help like frame it up, make it even. Tony curtain. To Tony curtain? Is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. I don't like that. Uh, curtain to curtain. Numero uno's <laughs> Tony curtain album. Curtain to curtain. Curtain to curtain. Yeah, first, first thing will be curtain. Tony curtain. <laughs> with. Uh, who's a good one? Another. Yeah. You can call it, like Thank, I said, curtain to curtain. Did you guys check out the new King Kachonga graphic? That's a great graphic. <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. You I like said that. that to me midweek and I enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, a little tease. We got not only a great soda uh, coming up this evening. I think there's going to be less Kachongas now, though. You less did, Kachongas. You did, I made a, you did something interesting and I think it's work, it works. Well, I made a graphic and now I don't have to use it. <laughs> that's, that's what happened. Oh, don't worry. That won't last. Great soda tonight, Steve. Great chip tonight with a uh, little serving suggestion, which you've not done in a little while. Really? And dig of the week. It's the best kind of the dig of the week action coming uh, tonight. And that is uh, a choo choo. We got a little VCLT <laughs> coming down the pipe that uh, has been anticipated for a long time. Uh, wow. Ran we, should, into some, we should really celebrate. Some issues. And so. Um, this, is really, this, this is from across the pond. Across the pond, man. It's going it's, it's to be an epic and dig of the week chip chat I, and so to speak. So we got good stuff coming. coming. Your birthday's when? Sunday. This Sunday? Yeah. You, you know, my a, a lot of times my birthday... You would, having a Pro Bowl party? <laughs> well, a lot of times my birthday would fall on the Super Bowl, but now it's later, um, so it doesn't. But What a juxtaposition of how my birthday fell on days that I would go back to school. With now it kid. falls on the Pro Bowl, which is probably, the, to me, the worst all-star game there is. Yeah, that is pretty whack. Because you don't want these guys to get hurt, but the game is to, to hurt, you know. I don't think I've watched a Pro Bowl emphatically since I was uh, probably seven or eight years old. No. Just because I'm like, oh, it's football, i got to watch it. Whatever. Mm. It's, it's on Sunday. And it's stupid that things like Super Bowl and you're talking about Oscars are, fall on Sunday. Put them on Saturday night so people can really have fun. Super Bowl Sunday. Whoever put it on Sunday originally. GD it, man. Put it on Saturday. If you want to sell more chicken wings and beer and liquor, and I mean, the liquor store is not even open on Sunday. Inconvenient. It's inconvenient, and you got to go to work all hungover or take the next day off or whatever. It's stupid. The Super Bowl should you, you be know on Saturday put, night. You know who scheduled the Super Bowl for Sunday? Jehovah's Witnesses. The conglomerate of convenience store owners. Well, yeah, that's a good... Uh, that's a good P. The Atari Alcove this evening. We've got the, uh, the the ECW bloodiest matches going again. Earlier, I moved the PS. You had a good game going on earlier. Earlier, I moved the PS2 that over was here. A good and, uh, idea. We're running some downhill domination, some mountain a, that's bike. That's a fun game. Fun game. Uh, Just downhill. You know, I always kind of, in the last few weeks, I think I've posed like a question. You know, how do you do this and what do you think about that? Here's something else. We've been thinking about doing this um, before. Mm -hmm. Baiting people? Like yeah. Clickbait? Clickbait. You're doing clickbait I want, I want likes and subscriptions. You're into some clickbait? Um, 
Would you guys watch a uh, let's play, Felipe? Like we did a uh, like we, we play a game and uh, sit around and bullshit and like you see those guys doing on yeah you sit on the... YouTube quite a bit. You guys watch a grown man record night let's play of some video game? Mm, I, don't know. I don't know. It's kind of this shit, but just we'll, we'll be playing a game instead of talking about. I think that prog band is so like on because they do so much like five eight, bro. That's how that's how record people talk. You ever hear them? You ever hear record people talk? I'm leading. I'm leading Sunday. I'm doing some uh, leading the uh, congregation and some hymns. Oh yeah. And the only reason I wanted to do it because this this Sunday we're gonna, they're doing one that's in five eight. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, yeah. oh, I, I want to do that. You know, the Brebeck. <laughs> no, that's that's five nine four. Eight. That's, that's five or four. Nine eight or five four. That's five yeah. four. Five eight is like is like six eight, baby. It has kind of a. Uh, a uh, Uh, a, a jibber jab. <laughs> you guys, a jibber jab. You, you guys, jibber jab fans. Um. So tell you what, uh, this has been a shitty week to be a drummer. Shitty week, definitely a shitty week to be a drummer. Um. A, a lot of for all the drummers that survived, congratulations. Well, that's kind of my point because we lost not only Butch Trucks uh, from the Almon Brothers, who decided to um, uh, excavate some of his brain out the other side of his head. Apparently, right in his own hand. In front of his wife. In front of his wife. A, a, apparently. Apparently. Allegedly. A wifeedly. A wifeedly. A parent. A wife's a parent sometimes. Sometimes. Um, so some of his brain come out of his head, and he made sure he did it himself. Um, that sucks. And then we got a, the guy from Can. Um, what's his name? Yaki or Jackie uh, Leva. Liebezeit. Liebezeit. Which is love. Love time. Love time. Yeah. Jackie love time. Jackie love time. Is that, is that like Vinnie Greenballs? Or, or Jakob Smirnoff, if you prefer. I think it's like, uh, that's how I read it originally. Jackie Liebezeit. No, Liebezeit. Liebezeit, yes. In Soviet Russia, Kraut rocked you. You know, uh, can. Yeah. According to Liebezeit. CAN stands for, and I know this, probably everybody knows this, so fuck you, but communism, anarchism, anarchism, and nihilism. Whoa, I didn't know that. That's what he said. Whoa. Well, they were political. They were just un into whatever everybody was into. Well, this is something interesting, because, you know, I, I know my music for the most part. I mean, you know, a lot of this is some stuff I don't know for sure. But um, when earlier in the week, people were like, oh, man, the... The can drummer died, and I'm like, "What's his name?" And it's not because I don't know Can, or I don't listen to Can, or I don't appreciate Can, or no Can. It's because, much like how I grew up with Pink Floyd, I never thought of David Gilmour or Roger Waters or Mick Mason. You never I, put a name with the band. It was all one thing. Well, I didn't. I didn't grow up with Can, honestly. I didn't, but I mean, even still, as much as I've been listening to Can recently, it's not like I. It's like, oh, Tool and the drummer is Danny Carey or Zeppelin and the guitarist is Jimmy. I don't break it down in that same way. And I kind of, there was an article, uh, New York something, uh, maybe the New York Times, I don't remember. Uh, but they were kind of talking about how the, um, it was inaccurate to call them a rhythm section because the, 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 the dude and the bass player um, kind of locked in and kind of did their own thing. You and, talking uh, about Can? Yeah. You talking about Holger Kazuke? Uh, yeah. The bass player, yeah. Yeah. See, the bass player is the one I, I think of the most because he's the most co the most cohesive member of the band that kind of kind of kept it together, and he's also a great producer. Well, well this article kind of talked about them uh, kind of locking in together and almost being a, a, a vocal voice in their own, okay. the way that they locked in to do their ryth rhythmic thing. And that's true. And, and I think because of that, maybe, perhaps, it's why I don't be like, uh, oh man, the bass player and the drummer for Can, blah, blah, blah. Where I, normally for some other band, I would know their names and I know the types of strings they play and the pedals they play and da, 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 da. I break it all down. I don't break them down. I let, it's like one thing. Can is like a thing. Right. I, I never think about, I wonder what strings or pedals the guitar player from Can is playing. Same way, I never back in the day th thought about Pink Floyd the same way because it was just Pink Floyd. 
Right. It was one big honking, yeah. and I never, I never broke any of that down the way I would some other band, right. which I think is a, a big attribute to to a band like that for sure. Well, yeah, there are those bands with standout guitar. Well, David Gilmour certainly is a standout guitarist. He but, is. But Jimmy Page is such a standout guitarist that you can't think of the band like that, you know. But each oh, of them. The band. But but if you think of it, the rhythm section of that band, you know. John Bonham and John Paul Jones, totally connected. Sure. They're totally in tune with each other. And the, the rhythm section of Black Sabbath, yeah. Bill Ward and Geezer Butler, again, it's like you don't think of Absolutely. that much, but it's totally dead on, but you got these other well, people that stand out. I think Led Zeppelin's a good antithesis to what I'm saying is like, all of those guys do all of those things exactly right, but you still know like, oh, Jimmy Page is this guy, and he's that guy, and he plays this instrument and does that. John Bonham is one of the greatest drummers of all time, and he does this, and he does that, and he's a, Jimmy Page is vocalist. John Bonham, you, you still break all those down into little sections, and for some reason, but I'll, I'll say this: Pink an, Floyd another, don't do another that. band that, to me, is like that, where you don't think of it, is Chicago, because I I grew up listening to Chicago when it was like you know early Chicago yeah. before like the first seven albums, basically. That was my Chicago, and yeah. that's the same thing. You know, it's like a bunch of guys. I would I would argue another one would be King Crimson. Yeah. Well, later when I start figuring out, wow, that's a that's a killer guitar player. Well, Adrian Blue really. Then you start thinking like, what's he all about? But the first albums, not these old ones, but I'm saying like, I don't break it but down you in might that put way. Like every prog band in, into that category. I don't know. It's really just certain ones that really just kind of grab me. But as bad of a week as it was for drummers, because you know, like I said, we lost uh, Butch Trucks, we lost Homeboy. Um, somehow, uh, we've managed uh, Peter Chris is still alive. Okay. I mean, take that for what it is. But he, he's still here, and these other guys are gone. <laughs> he's the heart and soul. Pick up the mic and say something, Jay. That's all it said. No, say about it. No, you said about it. Hell is for Give children. James Sil um, Simmons. That's some. Hell is for children. That's some talent. Jeez, that's Jeez, some talent. That rhythm Jeez salmon. <laughs> Gene Salmon. He swims upstream. The Gene. Welcome to the Gene Salmon Show. With his tongue. The Gene Salmon Show. With his tongue. Hey, you know, this week we also lost Mary Tyler Moore. And I've, yeah, which, I, you know, which really sucks, especially being in the news business. That's uh, that's very seminal. But check this out. A little deep tease. If you guys are nice and you play, you play pretty. Um, you're going to make it after all. You're going to make it out. Well, that's what I'm going to say. Are you? Is, um, there was a Who's Going to Do cover of the um, You're Going to Make It After All theme Mary's song. Elmore theme song, yeah. I don't want to get popped by YouTube, so I don't want to play it right right now. Well. But when we get done with the entire show at the very end, I'm going to stop recording, and then I'm going to play the... Uh, the so this is a... Just for viewers. Just for viewers live. I'm going to play the Husker Do uh, Mary Tyler Moore theme song when the show's over. So okay. stay tuned for that. Um, no, Jay, Jay says he's out of here. I know. Oh, no. It's crazy. Jay's upset because he's been up for so Jay long. Jay still be going strong. He's seeing triple, he says. <laughs> um, also, I read this week. I'll what show else did you a, read? You know, Ray Davies from the Kinks. You know... Ray Davies died? No. He's coming out with a new album. He's pregnant. Now he's pregnant with twins. <laughs> and he's coming back. <laughs> uh, Wait. What about Ray Davies? Got a new album coming out. Oh, no, he's okay. not doing one in like a decade or some kind of crazy It's not shit. a Kinks album. He's doing it with the Nighthawks. Oh. And the interesting thing about this uh, record, love it, Ray Davies. You uh, love the Nighthawks? Americana <laughs> is the name of the album. Draws inspiration from uh, Americana, the memoir. Excuse me, go back. It's actually the Jayhawks. The, what did I say? Nighthawks? Nighthawks. Oh, that's a blues band. Jayhawks. He's doing it with the Jayhawks. Jay, the curbist. That just left. Americana draws inspiration from Americana, the memoir, which includes thoughts on the Kinks band from America in the 60s, uh -huh. which I didn't know about that very much. Um, and their move to the U.S. later on. Include some spoken word passages that comes from Ray Davies' uh, autobiography that came out um, called Americana. Okay. The album will be released um, uh, April 21st. What do you think of that? 
I don't know. Have I'm you heard sure the Ray Davies solo stuff? Have you heard any of that? I'm not as familiar with that. I'll no, be honest. I'll be honest. I with just you. kind of skimmed across this and realized that this was happening. Um, also, saw a new video uh, today. I'm just kind of skimming through shit here. New video on Facebook, of, like behind the scenes documentary, uh, some Mastodon stuff, band that I've played with. When I opened Slayer, they played Mastodon played right after us, and uh, they got a new album coming out. They teased it with like a behind the scenes documentary. Thing. You got it. You got everybody hot for Mastodon. Hot for Mastodon. <laughs> um, but that the, the new Mastodon, which sounded amazing, it's kind of got a uh, cancer backbone. It's kind of the theme. A lot of the people, uh, family members and whatnot, affected most <laughs> by cancer. Uh, by the way, the show sounds really good with your headphones on. It does. Because of the burps are in the surround. Oh. The burps are in surround sound. Five point. <laughs> Five point uno. Hey, we. Uh, we forgot to mention in the our, March 31st when the Mastodon's coming out. Our death, yeah, death talk because we, we seem to talk about death. Uh, Andre the Giant, right? And I sent you a picture. Yeah, you so did do that. We could we could give a little okay. love to uh, Andre the Giant. He died yeah. on this day. This day, back in t January 27th, 1993. Why are these kids filling his tent? Well, I don't know, but um, much love to. To Andre, you know he died at I'm his glad father's he's not, I'm funeral. I'm glad he's not showing a chubby right there. That's it's true. That would be really bad. I bet his dick is really small, <laughs> but just because that's the way human nature works, you know what I mean? You think the drugs have to something to do with that? No, I just bet because you know, nature goes. Oh wait, wait a minute. Too much in this way. Hold up. Uh, but um, all the painkillers probably his stool is well, really, really dark. Oh, uh, if it ever came out ever, that's why he's so big. <laughs> All the painkillers made him so big because he uh, <laughs> he never used the restroom. All of that all of that feces is inside of himself. <laughs> all of that feces is inside. Just... What? <laughs> uh, no, you know he died at his father's funeral. No, he did not. Yeah, while he was attending his father's funeral, he pa had a heart attack and died. Wow. Nineteen nine. What would you say? Ninety three. Oh, by the way, uh, Yaki Liebitzite, Liebitzite also. Yakov Smirnov. He played on. Uh, In Soviet Russia, Prague plays you. <laughs> but uh, he played on uh, Brian Eno's Before and After Science album. I believe. I got that guy. How about that? Well, we you, should play you it. Might have a uh, little Yaki there. Let's play it. We'll play but it he after. He was a virtuoso, but he, but he. He held it all back and played very minimalistic and okay. very repetitive and just you know that was part of the, the way they did it. We'll play we'll play it afterwards. Okay. Uh, hey, let's talk about what we play. I got something I want to play afterwards too. Afterwards? Yeah. Okay. I brought a lot it. of people saying they're having trouble with the connection. They're going to watch it on YouTube tomorrow. There was a lot of that last week. Oh, what's going on? There's a lot of um, people kind of getting lag and getting, I don't think it's coming out of this building, is it? No. Okay. Yeah. You no. sure? Ain't no lag in here, bro. Your computer's weird. No, this is the beef computer. I got this shit go 2011. Well, you need to do a, a tune-up. I got a Tyco make, sticker. Do a tune-up and make sure that thing's running at, at oh, yeah. optimum, optimum speeds. Optimum speed. I got a Tyco sticker from... Uh, You're still in graphics. Yeah, I got a Tyco sticker from Underdog, from the Tyco record. Okay. I saw Shane Rocky was posting the, uh, the Tyco record. Get out of there. Get out of there, boy. Um, I want to hear it. Seems to be more shoegaze is what I hear. We're going to talk about what we played. I'm sorry, I don't mean to dilly, and I don't mean to dally. No, man. but I tend to do a little bit. Of you each. can dilly dally. We don't have a lot of. I don't have a lot of digs. And oh, we, you but might. it'll still be an hour and eighty minutes. It's still going to be epic. Of course. <laughs> um, hey, I left this on the table from last week. Uh, crashed out. And had to play uh, the same side. Boards of Canada tomorrow's harvest. One of the greatest records ever recorded, in my opinion. Um, I don't know. I just I really enjoy side one of this uh, this record, "Reach for the Dead." It starts with Gemini, then "Reach for the Dead." Holy shit! Just it's just amazing. And the story, you guys know this shit. I don't want to go on and on forever, but uh, the story of me helping with the ARG that helped determine this record is coming out and the release date and all. I mean, it was one of the greatest uh, moments of my life. Especially mm. musically, yeah, it was it's very fun and. Uh, you weren't getting a lot of work done at that time. I was not. I remember that because you were my you were my neighboring cube and you were like 
totally knew this puzzle going on. It, it was, and I was on the an RSC channel for the, uh, the, the that thing for uh, a good two weeks, and I would spend eight hours a day like looking at source code and things of pages and trying to find clues and tips and. Uh, yeah, it was, it was so much fun and very involved. It's like playing an, like an RPG or something for like weeks at a time and you're like all about the, the characters and your, you know, whatever. Mm. Anyhow, well, um, <clears throat> this little uh, dig of the week from a week or two ago, Roy Gallagher um, blueprint that I picked up. Enjoy this. Uh, it's not the best Roy Gallagher I've ever heard uh, for sure. Um, uh, just, I've got some digitally that uh, my friend Bill from work gave me, and uh, it's in some incredible like hard blues, slide blues, up your biscuit blues. This is a little more rock and roll based blues, uh, a little more structured, a little more clean, uh, radio friendly maybe even. Still a terrific album, and I picked this up for just a few dollars, so it wasn't like it looks crazy. Like a Bruce Springsteen album. It does kind of, it, especially the font. Um, but Bruce Springsteen. But still, it was a, it was a great album. Decided to get fruity with it, man. I wanted to hear a little jazz uh, jazz record after that, and uh, one of my favorites. Um, Love Brubeck, of course, like most uh, record collectors. And this is um, this. We're all together again for the first time. It's Brubeck, Jerry Mulligan, Paul Desmond, Alan Dawson, and Jack Six. And this is uh, the, the 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 claim to fame for this one here. It's a live deal that was in uh, 72. Um, let me see who plays drums on this for the simple fact. Um, Alan Dawson. Alan Dawson is, um, if you hold up salt, fuck, <laughs> fuck salt. That's what Tourette's guy says, fuck salt. Uh, Alan Dawson is on this guy here. This is a live deal. They do a 16-minute-plus uh, version of Take 5, and Alan Dawson's drum solo on Take 5 is the reason that I listen to jazz music to this day. Oh, is this the version? That's the version. This is the version you spoke of. Um, and I found this randomly, but it's one of those, much like that blues LP that I ended up just buying off of uh, Discogs because you never see it, but it was so important to me. Right. That's the jazz record that's so important to me. But I did, I ran across it at a place in Lexington, uh, North Carolina, that's no longer here. That Crossroads, remember Crossroads? Yes. Uh, no longer there. And I just kind of stumbled across this. It was a $4 record, clean, very good pressing, especially for a live deal. Right. Terrific, and I mean, oh my God, that drum solo! Oh man, that drum solo makes me want to say like, uh, I mean, your mom's not a whore, but she slid you in and out a few times. You know what I mean? That's what it makes me think about. Hmm. What'd you play next? Well, it was a dollar dig of the week. No, from last week start by saying I hate Ted Nugent I think he's a fucking douchebag I don't really I'm not a big fan of Ted Nugent um, even though he's the only guy in, during the MTV Cribs era when they did a Cribs on his house they didn't really talk about it they kind of zipped past it he's the only guy that had a bass boat in his uh, in his arsenal <laughs> everybody had Mercedes and the SUVs and the you know jet skis and stuff and even boats and whatnot but he had a bass boat. It was zebra striped, which was hideous, but it was a bass boat. Right. I'm like, oh, oh sure. shit. But I hate it. But anyhow, even if you hate Ted Nugent like I do, Amboy Dukes, killer band, which was like his shit before. His he was, psych band before. He was psych band before he was Ted solo Nugent. Artist. And this, I don't know how they went back. If they went back you can and tell it's like, oh, he, he hit it, and they're like rebranded. Let's this. put this out. It's Amboy Dukes album. We'll, we'll put this cute picture of Ted on the Ted front. Nugent this is, and the Amboy Dukes Hunter. survival and of the that, fittest it's live. It's a funny picture on the front because you know he's truly a bow hunter, and <laughs> but this is still pretty. I mean, it looks like a Peter Frampton. Seventy, nineteen seventy has a kind of a Peter Frampton look to it. It does. Nineteen seventy, and this is killer. This is a great record. It's it, a live album, right? It's a live album. And very, oh, I like that art on the back. Very psyche, very technical. And uh, the, the keyboard player is the one that does all the vocals on this shit. Uh, terrific stuff. And I, I say terrific stuff 
and I hate Ted Nugent. So that's oh, the journey to the center of mind's not even on here. It's that's saying something for me to say that, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, you know, uh, you know, dig of the week from the same week last yeah. week. Uh, a little cut and grass, baby, Osborne Brothers style. And I played the side that had a sweet. Hey, do they have a drummer? No, this was not. They so may have done that, that later. Don't, yeah. Aren't they one of those bands that added a drummer? Yeah, they added a drummer. It was like a big deal. Ruby, Are You Mad? May You Never Be Alone, Ballad of Jed Clampett, and Sourwood Mountain are the ones Ballad we played on there. Jed Clampett. We played the Ballad of Jed Clampett to come listen to a story about a man named Jed. Poor Mountain Air Bear kept his that was, But that was Scruggs and Flat. Yeah, yeah, it's that, them doing it. You know, Bluegrass uh, Sure, they, they bar it. They play everybody's. You bar everybody. mine, I'll bar yours. I think they wrote like, Rocky Top, though. Urines. See, they did write Rocky Top. Yeah, which is their or biggest we, claim to fame. Or was that uh, Kenny, yeah. Lo Kenny Loggins? <laughs> I went to the Rocky Top. Rocky Top, Tennessee. We were uh, we were inverted. Bullshit. Uh, oh, and I had to play had to play some Almon Brothers uh, because of uh, Almon. I brought an the, Almon did album. You? I brought the first album. The different one. It's my favorite. It's, it's, that's, That's probably my favorite. Enlightened Rogues is great. Enlightened Rogues is probably my favorite. Eat a Peach is great. I love Eat a Peach. I, I, I debated between... But I really like um, hey, Idle Wild South, and I really, 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 my favorite is the first album, the self-titled. Where they're sitting naked, they're the, sitting naked in the God, creek. I don't know if I have the first album, um, but th of the ones I have, I was arguing between myself, mm -hmm. Enlightened Rogues and uh, Eat a Peach. And, love uh, the cover. Yeah, terrific. And this... Uh, Jay was saying this it's is more produced by Tom Dowd, by the disco way. Disco sounding. I think it's no. He that was maybe one rhythm he's track. He's misguided. This is the one I had brought. Which one did you bring? Oh, my brother's band. Oh, oh you made shit. it go. You made it go. Oh, you made it go black and white. Kachanga. Oh, it, it went. It went back to uh, no. Now it's flickering. Walk away from it. No. Walk away from it. Walk away. No. Oh, walk away. I keep kicking. It's flickering. It. Keep kicking at it. See what happens. It's not flickering, is it? It's not now, but I'm that's not going to keep me from putting the graphic up. No, I'm putting the graphic <laughs> up. You don't get to show your record anymore. You get the graphic. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know if I... Maybe I have that one. Love the Allman Brothers, man. Are, I mean, we on, are we on graphics still? No, no, no. I'm okay, good. So you, these naked guys. Yeah, we can see all the naked dudes. And then cool cover on the picture on the back. Really cool. Well, that's awesome, man. That's sad, man. You know what I mean? Took his own life, but that's his own damn right. Uh, you know, you're three quarters away through a movie and it sucks balls. It's probably not going to get any better. So it's his own business. <laughs> um, Kitty. Oh, uh, look what Kitty's doing about it. Uh-oh, we can't go any further. Kitty. Cat has halted our record collection. Oh, Kitty, saying on it. Gra grab it under there. I'll push her that way. All right? Grab it. Pull it out of there. At least it's on. Kitty, you can stay right there. Next, we played a Parliament album. Why did we do that? I don't know. I just kind of pulled that guy. Kitty. Oh, I thought there was a reason behind it. No, no, no. I just... This uh, one's... Um, second to last album by Parliament. Well, that's... Didn't they continue? I don't Probably. know. Probably. That's what the little tag. Little tag. Fang Records. Fang. What year is that guy? I don't know. I mean, Second to last, it doesn't say. 1979. Oh, that late. Casablanca Records. Probably. Later than I would have thought, but cool. Uh, something I just kind of stabbed. I was like, man, we need a funk record. Man, we played in the funk records, and I stabbed and grabbed downstairs, upstairs. It's called, uh, what's it called? Gr Ghirardelli chocolate. Glory Halla Stupid is what it's called. Huh. Nice. And there's some artwork on the inside, but I ain't getting it out, to be honest with you. Oh. I ain't getting it out. Oh. I might trip on your cable or something. Yep. That's a, it, it goes all over. So I brought a can record. Yeah, of course, man. I didn't know which one to bring, but. What's your favorite can record? I don't know. There's something I like about just about every one of them that I have. That's a good one. I like that one. This is, um, this is called Can. And I, I don't think it was issued as, as such. 
think it had another name. I don't think this is unlimited edition. Or I think uh, no. the egg. Uh, egg Ebenyasi. Egg Ebenyasi is my favorite. Perhaps. I don't, that's tough. Someone asked me, was like, I think this is 79, I think. A friend of mine had a Facebook post the other, uh, the other day. It was like, what's your favorite 90 song? Like, 90 song? I just know this is the one with the wrench, the one with the wrench on it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how can you do, like, a song from a decade? A song? What's your favorite 90 song? My favorite like, 90 song? And I was like, ah. Probably something by Alice in Chains. Well, well that's, I that's when I graduated high school, so that's really in my wheelhouse. And I'm like, I... How could you possibly ask me to answer that? That's terrible. <laughs> Screw you for asking me that. Hey, today is Eddie Van Halen's birthday. Let's do let's do some liquor about it. We ain't done no liquor. Well, we, well, you saving it? No. Let's do that. My birthday's coming up. We'll oh drink, yeah, I'll drink to that. You and Eddie Van Halen's birthday. You guys can have a guitar blowout showdown. An Andre Giant death. Yeah, he can. He can come to your birthday party and die there again. Is he the one that there was a, like pop art? Andre the Giant has a posse, or is Obey? Some, somebody else? Obey. Yeah, yeah. That's um. That's Andre the Giant, right? Yeah. Oh, uh, what's his name? The is same it? guy who did the Obama thing. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, what's his name? Oh, Holger me. Kazuke. No, he's a DJ. John Williams. He's actually done DJ sets with R J D two or no uh, Z Trip. Danger Mouse. Yeah. Mm. Styers John, Ferry. John Stamos. Styers Ferry. Styers Ferry. Isn't that his name? I don't know. Somebody's going to tell you one day. Not today. They'll tell you in a, in a comment. They're writing it right now as I speak. In the comment section. <laughs> Probably. So um, next we played for Eddie Van Halen. You, you mentioned it was his birthday. And we played uh, something off of first. Shepherd Fairy. Shepherd Fairy. Thank you. Yeah, Shepherd Obey. Fairy. Hope. No, Styers Fairy's a road that's near Raleigh, I think. Shepherd Fairy. Styers Fairy's in Atlanta. Okay. It's something. It's something else other than what I said. Um, yeah, so we off the first album, first couple songs that... Running with the Devil. And the Eruption. And Eruption. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of the quintessential. Man, my mom loves some Eddie Van Halen, man. Did she meet him? No, no. She didn't. No, she was old school country girl that realized she liked Pink Floyd when she was 60 years old. And Eddie Van Halen when she was about the same age. She didn't listen to stuff like that. But uh, realized later in life, like, holy shit. Right. Wait a minute. I missed something. Yeah. Uh, Let me go back and find out what they're all about. Yeah. Uh, actually, I got her the new um, Gilmore album for uh, Christmas. She really, On she, an Island? No. There's well, another one, 2015. One. She called me like the next day and she's like, Is it good? Just so you know, that's really good. It's like, really? I mean, it's... I'm afraid. I love the solo David Gilmore stuff. I love the first album. Well, I, I, About Face is good. I, I, mine, my copy, I wore it out. So I obviously liked it, but it's not as good as... The stuff he's putting out now for, for an old man rock record, he's still really, really... Old man rock record. Dude, he's... I, I'll, I'll say this. I 70. Think Rolling Stones have recently put, in 2016, put out a... They put out two albums at one time, and one was nothing but blues covers. And it's actually a pretty damn good album. Oh. I mean, you know, they're rooted in the blues. Yeah. But they thought, well, no one will really want this. They won't buy it. So we'll put out an album, but while we're doing that, we'll record this too. But that that's what I prefer. Is to, I don't want to hear their new songs and shit. But I want to hear them play some old blues covers. Sure. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Um, this was the dig of the week from last week. And holy shit. Yeah, that uh, was good. I, I didn't hear it. Did you play it last week? Side one. Because I show. didn't hear it. After the show. I tuned out. Stephen Wilson, Insurgents. Um, which is the first Stephen Wilson solo stuff uh, after Porcupine Tree. And I played side two tonight. It's pretty I've, amazing. I've still not listened to three and four on this. So, oh, my God. I didn't, I didn't know much about him, but you told me Porcupine Tree, and he, he's associated with King Crimson. Yep. Actually, and Opeth. He's actually yep. mixed some of the, the reissues that they've done. 
uh, known for being the audiophile of audiophile prog engineers, right. producers, Some call musicians. Him the king of prog rock, like modern day king of prog Absolutely. rock. Absolutely. It's pretty I amazing. Would pretty, totally agree with really that. Really good. Uh, one of the best records. Uh, Jonathan told me who owns Underdog Records. He said, um, he, he totally owns it. Yeah, I asked him about the record. I was like, <laughs> Is, you like this Stephen Wilson? He was like, oh, it's, it's my favorite. He, he's like, I'll put it on for you. He's like, but I'll tell you this. When I worked at a, another um, another record store in town back in the day, we'd have a competition for like who can sell the most records, blah blah blah. And um, when I was behind in my sales, I would put that record on that Stephen Wilson record we just showed. He would put that on, and always somebody in the store would go, "Hey, what's that shit you got playing?" And he'd be like, "Oh, it's the new Stephen Wilson, blah blah blah." Mm -hmm. And he would sell them like that. Every time he put it on, somebody would be like looking through records and be like, "Hey, dude, what the fuck is that?" And be like, "It's Stephen Wilson." It's like, man, yeah, let me get a copy of that. He did. He did that to me uh, just yesterday, not with Stephen Wilson, but I'll show you. I'll show you what it was. Okay. And you, well, you played uh, two more records uh, this evening. Uh, this guy you pulled out of your your sack what? of goodies. Oh yeah, I was just looking it up right now because I, I I couldn't remember. And I always have trouble finding it because I can't remember his name ever. But I know I had this record. It's called Bagpipe Blues. Yeah, and it, the guy's name is Rufus Harley, and I, I think there was a um, after the death of I think it was Kennedy. Kennedy was assassinated, and at his funeral they played bagpipes, kind of like Spock when Spock died. Oh yeah, of they played bagpipes, and some people really caught on to it. Really made a, uh, an influence in, in in the kids in Harlem, and there were a lot of people learning to play bagpipes, and I think he was one of them. But uh, he played he played sax on one so a song and I think I don't know if it's him or someone else plays flute. It's not all bagpipes, but it's just a really kind of a cool twist on on some jazz. Some good stuff. It's on Atlantic. Uh, it came out in where the hell is it? '65, I think. Oh, earlier than I thought. Yeah, bagpipe blues. Uh, Rufus Harley. This is a mono uh, copy. Through all my travels. Yeah, and six, all the souls 65. I've encountered. His was the most human. Human? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I this last I was here two weeks ago and this was my awesome dig that I got. Well, yeah. It wasn't a dig, I bought it. Um, John Carpenter's Lost Themes. Who knew, man? I, I mean, well, I knew. Oh my God! I knew I always liked his his movie stuff. I knew he did great scores. Cool, whatever. Great. I'm not a soundtrack guy necessarily. Put this shit on. But this just is this him and his sons, and they they helped him with this at their home, I guess, in the home studio or whatever. It's terrific. And they just like, let him go, and it's it's pretty awesome. I really enjoy it. I mean, in and term, I saw at Jonathan's. Uh, he has number two, which came out also huh? last year. And so I'm probably number gonna, two's a little I'm, too a little close to number shit for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll probably run get that because I, I told I told Jonathan I was like if you really because he hadn't heard it and I said if you really liked the Stranger Things soundtrack, uh, yeah, the last song especially, you are gonna really like this. I mean, that it's, it's really Tangerine Dream ish. And, that last song is uh, it really reminded me of the, the Survivor stuff and whatnot. Okay, so that's what we played. Let's yeah. do a shot. We need to do a shot. Yeah, we need to do a shot, and uh, then we, we get into the dig of the week. Eddie, somebody, I don't know. Okay. Eddie Van, Van Heusen. Eddie Van Heusen. Are we gonna do it for? My name is Billy Shepard. I own a carpet store. Filling it. We got. I've already pre-cut some limes. Pre-cut limes. We got a container of salt here. Oh, okay. While we're doing this, uh, some, some people, people have asked claim. me, "What's the deal with you guys and Mitchum?" Oh, now, really? We didn't really. We need to talk about that. We haven't really talked about Mitchum too much. No I mean, a reason. We didn't river really sever ties with Mitchum. Should we go ahead and do this now? But what we wait for you to tell your story. No, no, no. Get it. <laughs> we were. Um, we were kind of in negotiations. I mean, to be to be frank and clear, frank and further. And um, while we never turned our back on Mitchum, uh, it was something that was ongoing. Never turn your back on Mitchum. No, no, no. And so um, we're happy to report, uh, as of this evening, that uh, we are back on board with the Mitchum product. And folks, let me tell you what. 
when you get into a situation like this where I want I didn't have a fat enough shirt to wear tonight. Grown man situation. Yeah, this is a very grown man situation for me. Uh, tonight, I didn't have a fat enough shirt to put on tonight. My all my t-shirts are a little too tall. Too, uh, you, for the, you've been too into the five dollar foot long on for the, Friday. For the amount of uh, for the amount of uh, foot long I've eaten this today, yeah. I didn't have a shirt that was appropriate, so I decided to put on a sweat s. I put on a sweat s. So it's a little warm in here. Sweat. Um, and so you you got to put on Mitchum. It keeps me from sweating underneath an inappropriately uh, layered sweatshirt for a record program that you do out of one of the rooms of your house. Well, you know Mitchum offers uh, 48 hours of protection. 48? 48. That's a lot of hours, Steve. Now, you probably have to cut that down with a, sw with a sweatshirt on. I would think you would cut it in half. Uh, there's a formula. Yeah. There's a formula. Let's do this. Let's do this. Happy birthday, Steve. Thanks, man. And um, and to Mitchum. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. That's good. Mm. I like that white part on that lime, too. The bitter part. You like that part? I dig it out of there. Look, watch that. I don't like that part. Watch this here. I that. love some citrus now. Before I leave it spotted. Bitter. Ah. Mm. It's like gristle. What'd that quadriplegic like gristle? What'd that quadriplegic brain dead kid get for Christmas? Mm. Cancer. Let's go to dig of the week. <laughs> um I'll do mine first. Cause you got an epic uh I got some stuff. You got man. epic mm, coming. Okay. Go and show your, your uh, non-LP. Non-LP? Uh, check this out. You know, we, I, I know a lot of you guys are geeks like I am, and I, we, we talk about shit that we buy uh, away from records, and I hit a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, bargain bucket stuff I'm going to show next week. I got some stuff put aside I'm going to show next week. Is J. Bunny 8-tracks? I don't know. Did you make a graphic? I didn't make one. Mm -hmm. do don't, I don't, I don't want, we there's going to be a new segment about 8-tracks coming up, but we, I don't want to say no. Let's deep tease that motherfucker. You know, I'll just throw it out there. But anyhow, um, I know you guys are geeks like I am, or some of you, and uh, some of the stuff I pick up. I pick up the video games. Some people like out. plates. Some people like uh, the, what do you call them? Yeah. Fiesta wear. Fiesta plates. wear. Uh, Dr. Deadwax likes those. Boss Man Boss likes Man's those. Boss Man's into it. Uh, but he's, in, I, oh, he's also into Dex. Yeah, he likes Dex. I didn't Dex. say Dex. I said Dex. 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 I'd say it real loud so you don't think it's Dix. With an X. Only a Dex. Oh, he might be into Dix. I don't know. So I, I picked up, you guys know I collect the Nintendo games, and I picked up one. It's not You collect all games. I do. Whether you have the system or not. And that, true. That always amazes me. It's true. I guess and that's a collector thing. It's yeah. not a gamer thing. But I picked this up. It's a, it's a pretty um, uncommon, uh, unlicensed NES game. I've never seen that before, anything like it. Uh, that's, uh, I've actually picked up from a game store, and it's, uh, it's called Ultimate Stuntman, made by Comerica. And it has this chip on the back, this little, because uh, the regular Nintendo games had what's called a lockout chip to keep people from the not licensed by Nintendo. It's beautiful. It's, a, from, it's uh, a very it, shiny it gold. Like, everybody thinks but it's Zelda. On the back, it. check this out. But on the back, you see this little guy? There's a switch in there. That switch. Um, I don't know if you can see it because it's shiny. Yeah. You switch from uh, NTSC to PAL. And what this does is bypass there. the Nintendo there's lockout chip to keep you from playing unlicensed games, but they figured a way around it. And uh, while this is not like, uh, this, you know, it's not a little Samson or something like super rare or anything, it's uh, uncommon for sure and a pretty good price on it. It's got a, and it has a local store rental sticker on the front. A uh, little Thomasville, uh, see that on there, Steve? The little silver Keyville. Thing. It's got a little. Great Escapes video. Yeah, it's got a little rental store. So I'll, that's probably why it's a little, uh, little less pricey because it's a, uh, it's got a sticker on it, but I think I could get that off if I wanted. Although I wouldn't, I wouldn't take it off. I don't like taking uh, local rental store stuff off of my games or movies or records or anything because I think that's cool. Like if I buy a record that says like Peaches on it and that's like a local record store that was here for a long time, I don't want to take that off because that's, to me, that's part of the history and the nostalgia of the thing. Peaches was in George too. Man. Yeah, there was a little. Might have been from There was a Strawberries. Peaches. I think maybe probably the same company. Anyhow, you got some records. I got a, I got maybe three. Okay. 
But um, I got this in the dollar bin, so bargain bucket uh, right here. A uh, little, uh, I meant to look him up because I think you might have some Jack McDuff. This is called. Uh, I don't know if I have it. I don't think I have it. Sophisticated funk. Check out that cover. Do I like that? Do you like it? I don't know if I like that or not. <laughs> uh, it looks like one of the uh, the uh, phone decoders for the old two meter ham rigs. Look up Jack could... McDuff real quick. Jack McDuff. Yeah. Uh, Joe Farrell plays on here, and you know, he's he's one of those cats that played with uh, George Benson. They did something together. Yeah, brother uh, Jack McDuff. Is this the same guy? Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. Anyway, it's a sophisticated fun. Some, now, I will warn you, this is from 1976. So okay. It's got, it kind of comes and goes within it being like funky jazz, and then it's being like that 76 kind of, all of a sudden the, the drummer's riding that uh, that hi-hat like a disco beat, you know. So, but it is a it is a pretty good record. I'd say oh, it's on chess too. It's on chess records. That's pretty interesting. I would say there's probably three, maybe four good songs on here. Okay, what well, you want me to read you the all music review of this? Sure. Okay. Uh, the all music site awarded the album two stars, stating this forgettable effort from Jack McDuff veers far too close to smooth jazz territory right. for comfort. Swapping his signature Hammond B3 for keyboards. McDuff settles for a fusion sound, suggesting a particularly tepid CTI session mm. uh, with none of the swagger and groove of his most memorable records. But how about the cover? It's pretty <laughs> awesome. It's a buck. It's, it's a, a buck, yeah. It's a pack of tapes, for shit's sake. There's, there's, I will, there's a solid three one-offs on there. Oh, great. I won't listen to the whole album, and I won't make anybody Which is how most funk endure records are. that. I mean, most funk records have at least two slow jams. Secondly, um, I picked up this Frank Zappa. Oh, come on now. Overnight Sensation. A pretty good price for the condition it's in, which Jonathan said VG. I, th I would say it's a solid VG. Um, dude, if he says that, I'm sure it's straight. That uh, that that Rory uh, McGallagher, I play, Rory Gallagher, I played earlier was uh, that's VG. It's only, five, it's only five bucks. I didn't hear any. That's how much mine was. I didn't hear. That's a that's a good deal on that man. So, really happy to, to pick that up. Man, I don't have I don't have a lot of Zap, and I, I wish I had some more. So mm. I'm slowly slowly adding. I'm not Always gonna, I'm not going to run out more. and spend thirty bucks. You know. Last but not least, I was in the store looking. And I found that um, Zappa album. But while I was in there, Jonathan was playing this record. He was he was listening to it and trying to decide what he was going to do and how he was going to price it and what shape it was in. And I was like, "What in the heck are you playing?" It was some guy, kind of beat poet, kind of reading his poetry over jazz. Okay. And his name's Kenneth Patchen. Mm. It's called Kenneth Patchen. Reads with the jazz in Canada. Whoa. He's from this album's from 1959, and uh, it's wow. it's it's pretty cool. It's pretty out there. Um, he's like a, like I said, he kind of in, was an earlier influence to Kerouac and some of those guys. Wow. Um, in fact, they kind of went and hung out with him, and then later he was heard to said that he. Didn't appreciate what they were doing with with the beat generation that they were yeah. you know taking drugs and just kind of screwing it up or whatever but um i want to play a little bit of that after sure. the show so maybe. man you know kerouac on the road that's my favorite book of all time is it numero uno for me okay. i've reread matter of fact i have a there's a free um it's called uh, on the road the lost scrolls or something yeah. like that it's it's a free book you can download uh, to like your uh, Google Drive or whatever. Apparently, uh, Kerouac wrote the thing on an actual scroll, like a rolled up thing, and just kept writing, unroll it, writing, unroll it. And the original lost scroll that he originally wrote it on has been transcribed, transposed into digital format, and you can download it for free. And just I, I've read it like um, probably two and a half times now because um, it's. Um, it's just great. It's a great story. It just, it, to me, his writing flows the way life does. Hmm. 
not to get all stupid about it, but it, uh, the way that it, it feels the way that normal wife does to me, and I can't explain that any better than that. Let's everybody take a lap together. Okay. Um, that's all your I will, digs? If you will. That's all my digs. Hey, I got the coolest kind of digs, the greatest kind of digs this evening, and that is the uh, VCLT. Achoo choo! This is some special shit here, man. For real. Um, some special shit because uh, I don't know that I've ever gotten a package um, from this part of the world. Um, our good buddy Ragnar from um, Reykjavik, Iceland sent a package in uh, like mid December. And he was mid worried. December? Yeah, he worried this shit got and lost. He's now opening it? Uh, it got kind of scrolled away, and somewhere between Iceland and North Carolina, uh, this package just kind of disappeared, and he couldn't find it, I couldn't find it, I contacted him on my local post, and said, I was afraid I threw away the little card that said, right, right. hey, we got a package waiting for you at the post office, and I'm like, oh shit. It sat in your mailbox for two months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I ran up, there, or I took a stack of Hardee's coupons and that, and threw them all away, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, the thing that comes every week that's got mm -hmm. the circulars. And mm -hmm. I'm afraid it got caught into that, and mm -hmm. I threw it away. And uh, so I called him, and they were like, no, 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 we don't have anything for you. And then I, he started, he mentioned that I may want to contact the local customs office. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, shit, I've never dealt with customs. I don't know what's going on here. And uh, it, just, just when I looked him up, and I'm like, i got to call the customs office. I don't know what to say, but I'm going to tell them something. Uh, it's like, I'm, a, I'm, I'm bananas, and uh, there's some records. Hey! And just hoping they'll be like, oh, yeah. Um, that day I came home, and this shit was propped on my, the outside of my door. So I don't know what's going on. And it had, it's, there's a, there's, I mean, to be fair, there's a rip on the front. You there's think, a, you think the, the feds went through it? Probably. I told him it's because of all the damn cocaine he put in it. But look at that. Look at the return address. I mean, it's just... Oh, cool. That's crazy, bro. Iceland, that's so cool. Iceland poster. Hey. Don't even try. <laughs> you can make yourself sound stupid because I, I, I've already done this. So I'm, this is a live opening and unboxing of uh, VCLT from our good buddy Ragnar who uh, watches a show. He, he's, he's always on me to upload the shows on Saturday because he can't stay up because we're like so far off in time. Like six hours maybe. He, I remember he, he was sending me messages. Germany was six, seven hours. He was sending me messages a little earlier. He's like, man, what's going on with the show? And I'm like, dude, I'm just like important graphics. It's like 8.15. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm loaded and getting ready to go to bed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's like, but I'll catch it tomorrow, man. And we wished everybody well. And, uh, uh, man, so we, we really appreciate it. I'm really, him. really glad he watches. Hell yeah, man. That's so cool, man. Uh, in a place that um, I would love to. Not, not everybody in America is a douchebag, by the way. You know. Just want you to know that. We do our best to be as douchebaggy as possible. Yeah, we're pretty douchebaggy. I mean, as a, gen as a general rule. But everybody is. Oh wow! I see a shirt right here off the top. I'm gonna save that because I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that return address and put it on the Frigidaire in there. What? No, it's not a shirt. Even it's the a bag. bag. Even the bag is cool. The shirt. A shirt. I think a you, bag shirt. You can put some armholes in it and wear it like a shirt. I can wear it like a. Yeah. Oh, I got a nice leather here. Got uh -oh. some records. Wow, some CDs in here too. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy shit. We got some stuff going on here, Steve. And the bat is from Lucky Records in Reykjavik. Oh, hold that up. Reykjavik. Oh, Woo! Oh. And you, a small child could wear it as a shirt. Yeah. Lucky Records, Reykjavik. Facebook, Lucky Dash Records. Lucky oh Records. God, so cool. dot is. Lucky Records. Dot is. Check them out. Okay, so, so we got a, some we got, love. We got a nice uh, we got a nice letter here. Dear Mr. Miller and the Groman Record Night crew, I'd like to thank you guys for a great show. You and your crew keep swinging them balls out of the park. I'm using baseball lingo to We're uh, swinging the balls. To underline how good the show is. I'll swing my balls huh? right now. The show has introduced me to a lot of music mostly in the jazz era. I was a beginner in that era and now I'm uh, now I'm a grown man, smiley face. Santa and his elf are sending you gifts uh, from Iceland after we are closer than you guys to the North Pole. That's where Santa lives. That's true. He's closer than we are. Right. 
closer than you are. In this package, we have, okay. Listen up. Holy shit. Look at that. I don't, I don't know which is which, so. In this package, I'll just read this. In this package, we have one, a folk album, which is This in, is it. Um, folk songs from Iceland. You're written. Liner notes in English sort of explains itself. Folk songs, the Savannah Trio. I lived in a town called Savannah. <laughs> um, a disco album, which you can groove to. The female singer's name is Helga Mueller. And now I'm connecting the uh, other albums. Is this it? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you you might have a word for it in journalism. Oh yeah, build up. The other records are from my friend Ari, who is an electro musician under the name Future Grapher. Cool. And his record uh, label name is oh, Mule here it Records. Is. Here it is. Hold on. Hold on. I'm on it. I'm on it. He said there is a connection. Miller? Mueller. Mueller? Right? That's an umlaut. Miller? Mueller. Miller? Miller? Mueller. Miller? Um, Skynervia is his album, he said. Skynervia? Is that right? Whatever, I don't know. I, I don't want to mispronounce things. Nyet is an album. Oh, he this is also a future grapher. Maybe this is it. I don't it, know. Well, he says uh, number four, E-I-T-T. It oh, I, sh I just showed that. Is an album he did with pianist uh, right John Alfawson. Oh, Mueller, look. Mueller. Yep. Mueller. So the last album is with a musician and who so called himself. All, this is also Future Girl. I think it's this guy right here. Yeah. It's just one of his friends. So this last album. Sorry, we're, we're kind of rookies at this. We're fumbling through it. We're doing the best we can. So the last album is with a musician who called himself Diogen. Unfortunately, is no longer among us. B i o g e n, Biogen. Biogen, hold on. Would you say that? I'll come back to that. Would you say that? This way? is another future grapher. I like that that sticker right there. Now is that is wow. that on a is that on a CD? Or no, no this is no. is this the Biogen? What's it called? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> America! Just show them all. We're all stupid. We showed that. I showed this, but I wasn't sure what I was showing. I, you show said disco, and I think I thought I, I associated this one with a disco record. This is this is so cool, man. What else we got here? Okay, now. Do you talk about CDs yet? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Um, CDs I give you from my personal about collection. So stuff here. You have that one? Icelandic metal bands that I've played for you. Skull Mold. Oh, hold on. Skull mold. Okay, here we go. There's two skull molds. Okay. We've got Medvasum and Bjorn Loka. Solstafir, which I remember, is another band. Well, Solstafir, I showed that one just now. This is, um, what did you call it? Skull mold? Skull mold. Skull mold. Skull mold. We're trying. We're really trying. Nice artwork, man. Look at this, like, Viking ships. Yeah, these guys really ships. do artwork. Viking ships and shit. You know, it's funny. I just watched uh, Until the Light Takes Us, the Norwegian death metal. Uh, There's another Skormold. This is Bjorn, documentary again, Bjorn Loka. This is incredible. Black. He says, enjoy, my friend, and keep rocking in a free world. P.S. Best wishes to uh, all of you, my friend. And uh, Ari, the, the, the guy on the, the record, says hi. Your friend from the north, Ragnar. Ragnar. Dude, you are the man. Thank you so much for sending us some shit. Halfway around the freaking world, man. That is we so love, cool. We love it. That's so cool. Uh, I've never had anybody do some sh The last time I got posts like this was from uh, uh, probably my pen pal in like second grade. Tokyo Rose. Tokyo Road. Tokyo hey, let's Road. Let's do a shot for that. What oh, we're going to do a shot for Ragnar straight for Ragnar. up for him. He's probably one. Dude, I'm going to put him in here so I don't F him up. Yeah, he that's oh my god! That is awesome. That's so cool. Uh, it's such a very cool culture, and um, I just—you were talking about like black metal. We were talking about. I was. Some of the uh, the uh, atmospheric black metal stuff that yeah. uh, from up north like that. So that, uh, uh, I think you're in for a real treat. So, uh, hey, thanks, man. We appreciate the Christ. shit out of you. Christ. Skull. Skull.
Mm. Sweet. Oh, yeah, baby. Woo! That's all we got for a damn uh, dig of the week. But what a freaking dig of the week. From halfway across the damn world. Across the pond. One love, baby. That's how that train keeps rolling. A choo choo! One love! So thanks again, man. And we're, we're going to take a quick commercial we're break. We're going to send you a Make America Great Again hat. Yeah, we'll send you a Trump hat, man. Uh, but we're going to take a quick commercial break. And we'll be back here with a uh, quick, so to speak, and chip chat here on this uh, just fan freaking tastic episode of uh, Girl Man Record Night. We'll be back in just a minute. Borst. Check them out. Books. Check them out. Pick up a book. You got a fantasy? Imagination can take you to where you want to be. Are you curious? How can you find out? Books. Check them out. Books. Check them out. Read about stars and cars, play electric guitars, or cops that work hard, patrolling the boulevard, the heavyweight champ and his craziest bout. Books. Check them out. Books. Check them out. At your... <laughs> Mr. Yuck is me. Mr. Yuck is green. Home is full of lots of things that children shouldn't touch. Home is full of bad things that can hurt you very much. Now there's a man whose face is green that you ought to get to know. He'll warn you when danger's coming fast or slow. Get to know his face in every single place. When you see it, you'll know quick. Things marked yuck make you sick. Sick, sick, sick. Sick. Mr. Yuck is me. Mr. Yuck is green. Hey, gang, getting a little bored with Opal Phil and Johnny, huh? We'll try it this on for size. Great, shut up the body and you shut up. I'll insult everything but your intelligence. Weeknights at 11, only on 31 UHF. Hi, There's a great new dish you can't put down. Con's corn dogs, they just hit town. Hey, Mom, we want Con's corn dogs. Corn dogs. Con's hot dogs and cornbread, heat and eat. It's a meal on a stick that can't be beat. Hey, Mom, we want Con's corn dogs. Hey guys! Hey. Thanks for staying with us here on Grown Man oh, Record Night. Yeah. I want that graphic for some reason. I don't we know why. We are back. But it's a cool graphic. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit at all. How's that fit? It fits your mom's that fits basket it. weave. That fits it. You know, I said this before when we showed this graphic. You want me to buy a product? If it's a bottle or something like, oh, what's this? Put also great on fries on it. Mm. I'll buy it every time. Yeah. I don't care what it is. Boring Castle. Uh, yeah, anyway. All right, so uh, thanks for storing us. Uh, keeping with us here on Grown Men Record Night. We've been keeping it moving and grooving through this Friday night into this long early that? Saturday morning. How long is our show? All the way into it's Saturday morning. This is not a long show. We're an hour six, but we were like, there was like ten minutes before we started the show. Oh, yeah, that was my fault. Mistaker. Now I'm about to go into an editor. You can do it. I'm afraid of it. Um, so yeah, well let's, let's you can do. You probably a, cut about 300 meg off the show if you do that. Totally, totally. Uh, you got you brought something for so to speak tonight. I did. Okay. I was out somewhere at a Publix and oh. saw a soda that I had. I don't think we'd done. I don't. We may have done a Fago. 
We've done some Fago. Have we done some Fago? We haven't done this Fago. Never seen a glass bottle Fago at all. This is Fago. Sheets sells 24 ounce Fagos oh. in plastic for 99 cents. Okay. That's a claim to fame. Yeah. They're also known for being the uh, soda that is uh, kind of sponsored by the Insane, Insane Clown. Insane Clown. Well, they don't sponsor, but I they think Insane Clown Posse has put their soda Stamp in of approval. a number of songs. Yes. Um, they're from Detroit, Michigan. Okay. And we Deep love Detroit. we love a lot of stuff out of Detroit. Deep Detroit. So um, I don't know if they're still out of Detroit, but they origin originated out of Detroit. Yeah. Uh, 2008 Fago Beverages, National Beverage Company, NBC. NBC? Detroit, Detroit Michigan. Okay. And National Beverage Company. So it's a Fago, it's called Rock, this is called Rock and Rye. I believe it has a, it's like a red cream soda if I'm not mistaken. I, I, dude, I threw that up for three days. That's funny you did that because uh, me and Jack, before the St. Patrick's Day Parade, we drank a lot of uh, whiskey, I think, and, and he, he ate a lot of carrots yeah. the night before. Well, so when I went to pick him up to take him to the parade, because we were marching to the parade. He's puking up whiskey and carrots? Because I was a drum major. Is that he, what you're going to get ready to tell me and he here? Play, he played clarinet. Yeah. And uh, there were there were carrot shavings all over the floor in the bedroom. Did you so guys ever threw it up? Did you guys ever scrub reeds? We, we didn't. We didn't. I played a uh, sax and he played a clarinet. We didn't really share reeds. So here, this is Fago Rock and Rye. My story was uh, one night I came home from hanging out at band practice, and I ate. Some, I like uh, that. It's I, not. It's not overly sweet. I made a bean dip with the uh, Pringles Cheezums as my Pringles Cheezums. Yeah, the cheese Pringles as my Scoopersons. Okay. And then I drank like while well, I'm like I'm eating like chips. Not a great dip, chip. Chips and beans and stuff, and because I'm all effed up after band practice. And then I'm like, oh, bro, I'm so thirsty. Fago? It was a store brand red cream soda. Oh, red cream. And for whatever reason, whichever one of those was the problem, Yeah. for the next three days, I puked solid. And red. so red cream beans. and beans and Pringles, Pringles. cheesums mm. were my throw up. Like, I so don't know. So it was orange. It was red and then the yellow cheesums. Orange. Cornbread. A brownish orange. Cornbread. Hmm. What do you think of that? It's not overly kill you sweet. It's pure cane sugar. I really like that. I like it a lot. I can't really pin it down to a certain flavor that really dominates one over the other. I can't really pin it down to a certain uh, anything that. Oh, I recommend you try this. Yeah, that's a great soda. Early nominee for soda of the year. That's legit for sure. I would buy that again. Absolutely. If I was thirsty. And I'm well, No, no, I wouldn't buy it if I was thirsty. I was buying it if I was enjoying the soda. If I'm thirsty, I'm gonna get a Gatorade or something. Cause I'll kill it too fast for me. Personally. Yeah, I'll get a Diet Mountain Dew. I'm a I'm a horker. So if I get I'm a, if I'm too thirsty Diet Mountain Dew is like crack. I can't get anything that's like smaller or diet, and like or a diet Dr Pepper. Usually, I go to the, like the local store where they sell any size drink for sixty nine cents, that, and I get the that's I get I the sixty four ounce or the 60, 52 ounce, whatever it is. It's you know my, what I do? The cups this big. You know what I do? What? I do that now, but I do unsweetened tea and put lemon in it. Unsweetened yeah. with lemon. Thanks to they don't sell that in the convenience store. Do they? Sheets has the best unsweetened tea of anybody I've ever had. Really. Absolutely. Oh, how and much the little, do they sell it for? Except the uh, 99 for any size. Okay. I can and they that. have the packs of lemon. I wish there was a sheets instead of what it is on the corner near our station. Yeah. Um, but a, an unsweetened tea with fresh lemon is my favorite drink going on, thanks to a the most veteran and seasoned of reporters sure. in the state has turned me on to unsweetened tea, which I would have never had before. So we're finishing up the so to speak, and we're going to go into a little chip chat. Now, for this chip chat, I figured up. Uh, not only do we have a, uh, a little serving suggestion, why don't we take a little dip back into time and see what chip chat uh, suggestions we may have had back in the day. Back in the day. Dino Mitas from the Doritos Corporation. The little rolled up tubes that are really hot and stain your fingers. And we've got a bowl of uh, 
uh, chicken vegetable soup. So these things are hollow. So let's see if this will work as a straw. They absolutely work as a straw. A very spicy straw. And then you can eat it. Right. Okay. I'm not I'm not sure where that shirt is anymore. I'd like to find out where that was that. I'd like to you? It was me. I'd like to find out where that shirt is. I don't know if I know where that shirt is. That would fit you right now. Um, I'm looking for a big shirt. Yeah, I gotta it's do probably in a pile a somewhere. Fat shirt. I need a fat shirt for some. That's in your. That's in your 2014 pile. Too many carbs. Look in your 20. Look in your 2014 pile. With too many carbs. So we do serving suggestions from time to time, obviously. Now, if you noticed in the past couple of weeks, I, you know I have to go to the gym every Saturday now about 8:30. Oh, in the morning. are you serious? Yeah, we do that. That's in the. Do. How do you do that coming out of here? I just leave here and it I, goes I, to I go home and we go to the gym. What? That's, that's what happens. That is insane. That's not good for your health. Oh, man! No, you shouldn't be doing that. No. I do that. No. Yeah. No physician would say that is a bad idea. At all. Ever. It's, um, a, light, it's a light workout. For yeah. Me. Um, but if you know, we did serving suggestions back then. I got a new one uh, for you this evening. If you notice in the past few weeks, I, uh, Food Lion, which is a local grocery store here, as a you, might rem you might know them as that company that had the bad meat back in the 80s or the 90s. Perhaps. It was 60 Minutes or not, whatever. Primetime Live. Primetime Live did a thing on My Food dad line. may or may not have been a store manager when that scandal came out. For Food Line? Are you serious? Maybe or maybe not. He may not have worked in the meat section. We'll talk about it after the show. <laughs> uh, but anyhow. Let's just not talk about it. Yeah. Um, So you have a real oh, yeah. you have a real connection with Food Line. Yeah, absolutely. So Food Line, <laughs> they, they they got these new uh, store brand chips. We did a couple of weeks ago. The yeah. dill chips, which are pretty pretty good. The sriracha chips, which are really good, but they're pretty damn hot. But well, we put them together. You put them together. Oh my! You eat a half and a half. You put them together. You shake that the bag was, up. That was great. You shake the bag up <clears throat> on the back of the sriracha uh, bag. Sriracha. Or any that of, was sriracha. Yeah, or any of those uh, food line chips. If you look on the back of the bag, you get this guy, and I took a picture of it. Got to the end of the bag. Don't fret. Good idea. And there's a, a lightning bulb indicator there. Use chip pieces like the little crumbs in the bottom as breading for chicken fingers, a casserole topper, a replacement replacement. <laughs> For bread crumbs and meatloaf. Okay. Have you done any of these? I, uh, maybe I, I might toss them in soup. To I think I've done the soup. Toss it. Toss it in soup. I've done soup. That's I've not done, on there. I've done salad, which was a super salad. A, something I've uh, mentioned on the program like before. A it's like a crouton. And I've seen the breading for chicken fingers, but I've never done it. So I think uh, I think yeah. maybe, maybe for the Super well, Bowl next cool. week. When I do my uh, hot wings, maybe I bread something up in some chips. Yeah. Maybe we shoot a little video about it. I don't know. But uh, that'd be something. That's a cool. Uh, it's a cool little um, suggestion on the back of a store brand chip for crying out oh, loud. Oh, I thought we were gonna eat a serving suggestion. Well, no. I'm disappointed. We're gonna eat. We're gonna eat the chip of the week. I'm disappointed. Tell us about I was a chip of the week. Excited or some some dip hiding somewhere. This is the uh, the chip I've been waiting on. That we've this had has been the sitting over here, but the we, cache. I've been trying to. When I get over here and sit down, I kind of pull some bags and I look yeah. at the dates. And I know you can eat a chip past its day. Sure. I, I used to work for Frito Lay, and I kept a whole cabinet full of product that was outdated. I had pulled off the shelves, but I knew because we were just going to throw it away. Right. I knew it was still worthwhile for two months past its prime. I will say, of, of all the ones that have been sitting over here, this is the one I've had my this eyeball on. This one actually is date, its date is like January 24th. So we're three days past date, but hey. I, I think we're going to be fine. Of course we're going to be It's called fine. Hawaiian yep. Kettle Style Potato Chips Hula Peño. Okay. Now, normally I love that, uh, the sweet onion jalapeno thing God going on it. here. 
I'm, on, I'm just gonna. Uh, Anytime anything says Hawaiian, it's usually that sweet onion. Sweet flavor. onion, yeah. So I'm hoping this is a sweet onion that's got some jalapeno. Well, usually with you it. get something like that with the Hawaiian chips. It's like a something you would taste at the barbecue and, and on the beach. Hey, look, I'll stop hey, you right. Hey, listen, get fired up. We're going big and bold again with fourth release. The fourth release in our special batch series starts with everything you love about thick Hawaiian chips adds a jalapeno kick sure to start a fire in any occasion it's a limited edition mm. so dance while you can they're not just jalapeno they're hula -peno. you know I'll tell you if these don't live up to what I think they're gonna be this is already my suggestion and in light of what mm. we just said about the store brand chips you take the hula -peno, and you mix them with the sweet onion. Hey, you know, it says sweet onion and jalapeno, dude. Think about that. It says uh, find the perfect wave on the perfect beach, and you've got an idea how the best of simple things can make each other better. I feel like that's a gospel track. I don't know what the hell they're talking about. I think you're laying heavy on me. So today. this is a uh, Tim's Tim's Cascade Snacks from, of course, as you know. Algana, Washington. <laughs> we totally uh, sold the Hawaiian thing. Hawaii. 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 Get some aloha on you. Spread some aloha right on so your upper lip. So we're talking kettle chip. Looks like a sour cream and onion, but yeah. probably that sour cream or that, that little spice, that chive looking thing is actually jalapeno. I'm going to spread some of this aloha on my upper lip. Hmm. Mmm. Good chip. I think I could use a little more jalapeno. Yeah, all the shit talking backs down. There we go. Oh, there. That's a good chip. Great chip. That does have elements of that sweet onion yep. chip from the same company. Yeah, sweet. But onion. a little spicy. It's like a sour cream and onion. With a little spice. A little. I can use a little more. But not obnoxious spice. You put two cunt hairs more and it's too much spice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just one more cunt, high, cunt hair. Just one. That's good, man. That's good. Wow. What do you expect from Washington? Dude. It's late January. We just opened v VCLT from Reykjavik, Iceland. We just drank a possible uh, soda of the year, and I'm throwing a possible chip of the year because this is so unique and so out there. January, I'm, I'm calling it now. I didn't do this last year. I waited till all the way to the end of the year, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This is chip of the year here. You used to do this a lot. Like, I used to do it a lot. Top no, 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 five chip of the year. I've got a substance abuse problem, man. Where's your empathy? Um, but this is something, uh, both of these, I'm going to keep my eyeball on all year. I'll leave it at that. I'm not going to say, oh, these are going to be, these are going to be, this is the one. I got two things here I'm going to keep my damn eyeball on all year. And I... Some, somebody else is going to come up and have to knock these off the top of the chart. Let's put it that way. Hey, so you're a you're a you're a comedian. I think you're a comedian, comedian. at heart. At heart. Sure. Have you seen Kellyanne Conway stand up? Uh, no, <laughs> but I saw you posted that, <laughs> and I really want to see that. Well, I'll tell you, you. I don't know if you can get through it. Oh, well, I can get through it. Yeah. I just, I'm so glad she decided to get off of that New England Patriot helmet. <laughs> that outfit she had on? To come down and let us all know about. Oh. Oh, spider. Damn, she would fight you. Spider. I love her and I want to fight her. I'm going to put on that um, Kenneth Patchen. Each side only has like two tracks on it. Which one? The the jazz album with the the beat poet. Oh time. yeah. And right. we were gonna play something for viewers after you stop recording. For what? 
Right. So, you know, Mary Tyler Moore died. Let's do that first. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to stop recording so I don't get popped for this because I don't know how well this will go over with uh, YouTube. So only the people watching live will be able to see you this. You just have to look it up. If not, go look it up. Husker Du does uh, the Mary Tyler Moore song. Husker Du. Husker Du. So, uh, thanks again for watching Grown Man Record Night. Ragnar, thank you so much for the VCLT, man. We appreciate the shit out of you. And um, thanks, everybody, for just being a friend of the program. My new, it's my favorite new symbol. This is for, for... Okay, USA? Okay, USA. You? That's right. right. Yes. For you. Um, I'm going to throw this one at you, and this one over here. Get one of those. It's like, hmm? Hmm. I was okay, up, well, I was sad. I was upset with myself that I didn't go see Denny Lane. Denny Lane performed at a, a very small club. Is in my ears Muddy Creek, and on my Muddy Creek arm. Cafe. <laughs> little, little tiny place in Winston. Yeah. Denny Lane came and played his band. Was it band? No, it was uh, uh, Wings Over America. The band tour, of Oz. Did a tour. So I'm sure it was great. I just, it was on a Monday night and I was like, eh. Okay, in the comments, leave what movie this is from. <coughs> Paul Rubens does this. He tells the guy, hmm? Hmm. the guy goes, yeah, I know what this is. What is this? Paul Rubens goes, this is for you, and this is for the horse you rode in on. He shoves his face in. And thanks for going, uh, leave, the, leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching Grown Man Record Night. If you're live with us, stay tuned here for the Husker Do, uh, Mary Tyler Moore. If you're not live with us, um, look it up on YouTube and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to steal anybody's thunder. Check us out on the old, uh, the old uh, Facebook and the old yeah, YouTube. And if you found that you're, um, if you're, uh, if your cable's getting a little wonky, be sure to summon the power of King Kachanga. We appreciate and love each and every 